What's up guys, it's Jonah Jones here and I just wanted to share a little bit of wisdom um, that I've learned over the last like five, six weeks or whatever. And you know, myself, you know, I'd watch motivational videos, I'd, I'd watch my favorite bodybuilders. Um, and you know, when you're sitting down, you, you're in the comfort of your own home and you know, within yourself, you're like, yeah, this is awesome, I'm getting pumped up, so motivated. And it's like, that's a, that's a good thing. To, to do that and to get motivated but it's another thing to stay motivated every single day and not just for half an hour a day but all day every day staying focused staying motivated staying conscious in your mind of every step that you need to take to get to where you want to be because I, I really believe you can accelerate your results accelerate you know getting to your end goal and for me it's it's doing this comp it's getting shredded it's getting in shape the best shape of my life not just getting in shape but for me <clears throat> this comp my goal is to get to 3% body fat and <clears throat> I've realized that in the past you know I thought I looked good I thought that I'd done enough but when I look back I realized that even though a lot of people would say, you know, you look amazing, you train so much and that I know within myself I can do better and I believe we can all do better. Of course we can. We can we're never going to be perfect. And so what I'm trying to say is that even you watching like and listening to what I'm saying right now, unless you take what I'm saying and apply it and have a dream and have a goal and in your own mind have a determined thought with action behind it and a plan and believe in your heart that if you do what it takes you will get there and succeed it's not gonna happen and you have to go over and above if you want to be the best you can't just do what's on the plan I believe do the plan and do more go the extra mile be the hardest worker in the room and that's what it takes you know, because there's always going to be someone out there who wants it more than you, who's training more than you, who's putting in the extra effort. So if you really, really want it, you'll get it. But if you don't really, really want it, you won't get it. And that's just the truth. Too many people, myself included, everyone said something and they haven't followed through. Everyone has put in less effort than they were capable of doing. And I know that. So, sure, there's some exceptional people like Michael Jordan and all these athletes that are just far above the rest, Usain Bolt, because they have this talent from God. They have this gift. But if you don't use your gift, if you don't use your talent and practice and practice and train and dedicate your life to your destiny, to that vision, to that goal, to that dream, it ain't going to happen. Potentially, it can happen. Everyone can fulfill whatever it is they've been called to, whatever it is their purpose is. But a lot of people don't even want to try and find out what their purpose is. What is the meaning of their life? Why were they put on the earth? You were put on this earth for a reason. This isn't just like some big bang and we're just here and we evolve from, you know, fish and monkeys or whatever they say we were designed specifically for a purpose and God put that dream and that passion in your spirit man <laughs> so much rubbish so many wrong like teachings and doctrines and ideas and religion religion different religions different denominations forget all that forget that whatever you love Whatever you feel great about doing, go and do that. Put the effort in. Only, Even if you can only put an hour a day into your dream, next time try and put an hour and one minute, an hour and two minutes, and keep building up. So eventually, you're putting all your time and energy and effort to what you are called to do, your destiny, your purpose. It might not happen overnight. It might not have to happen in a week, a month, a year. It might take 10 years. It might take 20 years. Who cares? Along the way, you'll grow. Along the way, you'll get stronger. Along the way, you'll develop a better character, a better mindset. You'll become stronger. 
You get to know God more. You get to build up quality friendships who stuck with you and you stuck with them and you help them get through their trials and tribulations and you become more of a leader and you have more influence and you are successful in life and you live the abundant life. That's what it's all about. Too many people lack the motivation because they don't know who they are and what they're called to do. I'm going to tell you right now who you are. You are made in the image and likeness of God. You have God qualities in you. You have the ability to believe in your heart and speak with your mouth and go out and take action and succeed. That's what God did. That's what he does. He is a success. God is love. He is all powerful. He's the creator. He is everywhere and he is in everyone. You can't get away from him. Even if in your mind you think there is no God, guess what? He's in you anyway. He made you. You can't get away. It's impossible to escape from God. Even if you reject him, he's still there. Okay? People say there is no God. I have no idea why you think that. But it's okay. You have a free will. If you want to believe and think uh, that there is no God, then go ahead. I don't care. I'm speaking to the people who want to listen to me and who want to grow and who want to learn and want to, who want to take on board the wisdom from heaven, the wisdom of God that is foolishness to the people of this world, the smart scientific people who have heart, think they're really, really smart and intelligent, but they don't know God. They don't know the one who intelligently designed them in their mother's womb and formed them. They don't know God. God. So really, they are foolish. It says the man who uh, doesn't believe there is a God is foolish. He's a fool. If you don't believe in God, you're a fool. Because that's just ridiculous. That's the most ridiculous theory and idea you could ever have to think that there is no creator behind this beautiful, magnificent design with a sun and a moon and the stars and everything. And I'm going to tell you right now, I know God personally, I'll tell you without a doubt, there is a God and he loves you and he died for you on the cross. He shed his blood to wash your sins away and his blood reveals how valuable you are to him. He redeemed you and he reconciled you to himself, not counting your sins against you. Yes, sin is an issue and Jesus dealt with it fully. It is finished. Jesus cried out on the cross and even the people that killed him and pierced him and whipped him, those Roman soldiers, Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So you guys, if you don't believe in God, you don't even know what you're doing really. You think you're smart. You th think you have worldly knowledge. And hey man, I love you. <sighs> I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you see the true life, the way, the truth and the life. Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And a lot of people might think, you guys might think I'm crazy, whatever, but I am 100% in the peace and the joy and the love of God and His glory surrounds me like a shield and no man can stop the plans and purposes of God in my life. And that goes for you as well. If you choose to know the Father and know the Son and know the Holy Spirit, I'm going to tell you right now, when you find out your purpose in life, you will have passion, you will have energy, you will have power, you will have strength, you will have faith, you will have grace, you will have every blessing heaven has to offer to fulfill that purpose and that plan for your life. But if you reject it, if you reject your destiny and Jesus, you've got nothing. You have nothing. If you don't have love, you are nothing. And God is love. And the truth is, His love is in you. He loves you. Guess what? True love is not that we loved God, but that He loved us first. Even when we were sinners, Christ died for us. And we're not saved by going to church. We're not saved by our good deeds. We are saved by grace. It's unmerited favor. It's unearned. You can't work for it. No one deserves it. It's a gift of God. So only the gospel, which is the good news, has the power to save those who believe. Because in this gospel, this is the secret, this is the mystery, God's righteousness is a gift and it's everlasting. So guys, wake up to the truth. 
You've heard religion. You've heard all the lies. You've heard all these other religions that are man-made and traditions. I'm telling you to live a life of love, to live a life of faith, to live out your goals and dreams and succeed and be prosperous. Why? Because Jesus became poor so that you could be made rich. Jesus was whipped and scarred and and just he, they put a crown of thorns on his head. He suffered and by his stripes, when they whipped him, you were healed. Jesus went about doing good and destroying all the works of the devil. The devil was putting sickness on people. The, the devil was lying to people. But Jesus came as the light of the world to a people who were sitting in darkness and didn't know God. All they knew was religion. All they knew was a set of rules. But Jesus came to reveal the heart of the Father, which was his love, his grace, his love <laughs> amazing love unconditional love sacrificial love and he went about doing good he healed the sick he raised the dead he cast out devils out of people who were tormented in their minds so many people right have depression so many people don't know how to fix their thoughts and their mindset. So they go to the doctor, they get on antidepressants, they get on all these chemicals and pills that dopes them down and makes them feel like zombies. People are in mental wards, but the doctors only look at the physical side of things. They have no idea about the, the mental and the soul realm. And then the spirit realm, which is the deepest realm, you have a spirit, soul, and body. And there is a spiritual realm. I'm just going to put it right out there. There is angels. There is demons in the unseen realm. You guys can't. Some of you guys may have seen it. Some of you guys never seen it. Don't believe it. But there is. I've experienced it. I know it. I go, go through it every day. I, I need Jesus. I need God more than anyone. And you guys need him too. But what I'm saying is you can't fix a spiritual problem with a physical pill. All right. You need prayer. You need Jesus. You need the word of God. You need the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God spoken in faith over the sick. You need power from the Holy Spirit to break through these powers of darkness in people's minds because the devil has has blinded the minds of the unbelievers. In this, they can't see the goodness of God in their thoughts. They keep thinking that God is bad. God is judging. God is sending people to hell. Jesus came to save us from hell. Jesus came to save us from the lies of the devil. The devil is behind all evil, all sickness, all poverty. That is the devil. And he is manipulating leaders around the world to um, suppress and oppress and control different governance governments, sorry, like North Korea, like China, like these different, uh, you know, Africa, even different, who knows, different leaders, right? There's corrupt leaders. We know this. This is the truth. I'm speaking 100% truth right here. If you guys would open your eyes and, and do your research, see what's going on in the world, read the Bible, get to know Jesus, um, but don't get messed up in religion. <laughs> Man, I'm going to tell you right now, even if you read the Bible, you're gonna, you could get messed up. You could become religious because the Pharisees in Jesus' day, right? They had the Torah. They had the Old Covenant. They read the Bible. They knew it back to front. And then God came to them in the flesh, Jesus, and they wanted to kill him. And Jesus is like, you reading a book that's about me, but you won't come to me, all right? The prostitutes and the tax collectors and the sinners are coming to receive my love and grace and entering the kingdom by faith. And you Pharisees, you religious people think that you can earn it in your own goodness. Your holiness is nothing. It counts for nothing. And that's just the way it is. All right. So I know a lot of people that are listening to this um, probably aren't religious and they don't go to church. So you guys are just like I was, you know, you go to work. You think about the weekend, you want to go drink, you want to go party, you want to go have fun, right? And you don't think about God. You think God's uh, not fun, not cool, but God is very fun, very cool. And the devil is just putting little thoughts into your mind to take you away from getting to know God. And yes, they're not bad. Going to the beach and having fun and having parties and celebrating with your friends and doing all this, that, that's okay. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. But at the same time, we forget God. We forget love. We forget Him. We forget what our purpose is and the meaning of, of life. 
we just like go about, yeah, yeah, one day, oh, maybe I might get to know Jesus. One day, one day, you keep pushing off, rejecting, rejecting, rejecting. How long are you going to reject the creator? How long are you going to put it off? Why don't you get to know him now? Because he's there, he's waiting. He he's a he's not going to force you into it. He's a gentleman. He he's not. He doesn't want to control you. He doesn't doesn't want to force you. He loves you, right? And if you want to go your own way, that's totally cool. That well, it's not well. You can do it. He's not going to stop you. He'll go with you and keep, you know, saying, "Hey, you want to get to know me? You want to chill out? You want to like have eternal life? Do you want to go to heaven?" Or do you want to just think that you can live life without me and survive without me and just go through life working a job, not really knowing true love, not really knowing his peace or joy or revelation and insight into how amazing heaven is and what you can, what your potential and ability is on the earth. You can do much more than you think. If you want to live a good life, you can. You can do anything you want. And religion won't tell you that. You go to a church and their denomination, they'll say, you can't do this, you can't do that, you got to do this, obey our rules, obey our this and that, and do this and that. And he's like, no, that's not what Jesus is about. He said, be free, be set free. I'll give you rest, come to me. Just get to know Jesus. You don't have to know about that religion, this religion, this person. Hang around people that are real, that are all about family, that are all about love, that are just not hypocritical. That's why, like, sinners, whatever, unbelievers hang around each other because they're not condemning each other. They're not judging each other. They're in it together. They're of one mind. They're all at the party getting drunk. They're all laughing. They're all got the same jokes. They're all got the same mentality. That's why it's all good. But as soon as you get a religious person in there, you know, calling them sinners, telling them they're going to go to hell and all that, there's, there's, there's opposition. There's like, get out of my face. I don't want to hear it. You know, but someone like me, if I come to you and you don't know Jesus, I love you, man. I want the best for you. I want you to see how good and how kind God is and how much grace he has towards you and how blessed you can actually be. And, and you can get out of depression. You can get out of fear in your heart. You can get out of anything, any trouble, any setback, anything. I'm going to tell you right now, I've been through really hard, depressing, painful times, more than you would ever know. Even the devil himself, even devils attacking me in the spirit realm, they tried to pull my spirit out of my body, curses and witchcraft and spells. Man, this is real. I thought this would only happen in Africa. You see these people, demon possession and all crazy stuff like that. I felt pinpricks all over my body. I got supernaturally knocked to the ground. I saw a devil come out of someone's face. I have seen things in the spirit realm, man. And it's, it's scary. And a lot of people are like, ah, whatever. Well, it's true. And someone like myself, I, I would not make this up. Trust me, man. If this was, what, why, why, why would I make this up? That I'm trying to convince you. I'm trying to make you see that what I'm saying through my passion, through my belief, through my relationship with him, with Jesus, who's with me now, who's in the seat, he's in my heart. And boy, he's the one who's telling me to speak this right now. I ain't got no script. I ain't got no Bible. This is the Holy Spirit. This is the, this is heaven's message to you he's calling you he's giving you an invitation and whether you believe it or not he's coming back yes the second coming is real jesus christ going to come back to israel right to jerusalem and he's going to reign he's going to rule the earth he's going to take back everything the devil might come up the antichrist might come up for a short period of time and rule the earth and they'll and pretty much there'll be a World War Three nearly, and everyone nearly will be wiped off the face of the earth. But because Jesus comes back, he's going to save everyone. Because people are messed up. People are getting more and more evil. So we need love. We need light. And right now is an amazing time. Because there's so many more Christians and believers, right? And more people are getting saved around the world. Which means the more people get saved, the more people come into the kingdom, the closer we get to the rapture. 
And the church, the bride of Christ, the true believers, those who know Jesus will be caught up to meet Jesus in the clouds and we will be with the Lord. And then there will be a seven year tribulation and people who didn't believe are going to go through that. That's when the Antichrist, one more government, one more religion will be in place. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you're in that period, receive Jesus get to know him because he'll be coming back very soon after that and i've experienced literally what it feels like to be left behind and it is not good i was in so much fear god put, took me through all these tests and trials and showed me many things he showed me what it feels like to be in the seven year tribulation he showed me um you know what it feels like in hell my hand felt like it was burning off in lava um you know he revealed to me what the devil does to people he attacks them in the spirit he, he gives them depression he get like man it's real i've experienced i can relate to you god can relate to you and he's calling out to you all right so <laughs> you guys are tripping out about israel falau or whatever how he's like yeah this and that and people go to hell if this and that but all the, the ultimate thing he's trying to say man is you need jesus i don't care what sin you do i don't give a damn what you've done you need jesus who gives a crap man if you, i need jesus I, I need grace i need forgiveness i don't care if you're a gay if you're a lesbian if you're a transvestite if you're straight if you're a boy or a girl or a hindu or a muslim or a black or a white or a red or a green man you need jesus for real you need grace for real and people are gonna get um offended no matter what i'm not trying to try i'm not trying to offend anyone i love everyone and anyone no matter what they think no matter what they believe i don't give a damn all i give a damn about is if you know jesus personally all right peace